स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Now that we have stated and proven Cauchy's theorem, let's realize some of its consequences. As has been noted earlier, Cauchy's theorem is one of the most fundamental and one of the most powerful theorems in complex analysis. We will do justice to this claim by proving some very beautiful and striking consequences. The first one among them being the Cauchy integral formula. Cauchy integral formula is a powerful theorem in itself, and many times it forms that tool. Uh, for application of Cauchy's theorem to conclude various things about holomorphic functions. Let me first write down the statement and uh, we will discuss more. The Cauchy integral formula. Let omega be an open subset of the complex plane and let f be a function holomorphic on omega. Fix a point z0, fix z0 in omega and let R positive be such that the disc, the closure of the disc of radius R around Z0 is contained in omega. Suppose uh, gamma is a closed curve in omega uh, minus Z0 such that gamma is homotopic as closed curves up to a reparameterization. Maybe I should not uh, bother writing this, but let me put it down anyway, such that is homotopic to what? It is homotopic to the circle of radius r around z0 homotopic to gamma 1 uh, in omega minus z0 where gamma 1 of t is equal to z0 plus r e to the power i t for t in 0 to 2 pi. This is the circle of uh, radius r around z0. And what we are demanding is that gamma is homotopic in omega minus z0 to uh, this particular circle. Then the conclusion is that f at the point z0 is equal to 1 by 2 pi i times the integral over gamma f of z by z minus z0 dz. Okay, let us look at the statement once more. Cauchy's integral formula states the following. Suppose you have a curve gamma which is homotopic to the circle of radius r around z0 where z0 is an interior point and r is such that the disk of closure of the disk of radius r around z0 is contained in omega. Suppose this gamma is homotopic to the circle, then the value of f at the point z0 it can be concluded by how f behaves on the curve gamma. So, at points not in gamma like z0, you will be able to conclude what f is at z0 based on what we know about the behavior of f at gamma or rather f on gamma. This is the type of rigidity that was being referred to earlier. So, this in some sense captures the global behavior of uh, the holomorphic function on omega. It is not that we focus at a particular portion of omega and how f behaves there. The function f when it is defined on omega has a global nature. Let us prove this statement. The statement is to 
conclude that f of z can be realized as this integral. This integral is many times called the Cauchy integral formula. All right, let us give a proof. Since our curve gamma is homotopic in omega minus z naught to the circle of radius r around z naught and f of z by z minus z naught is a function which is holomorphic on omega minus z naught. The integral of f of z by z minus z naught over gamma coincides with the integral of f of z by z minus z naught on the circle of radius r around z naught. Let me write that down. Since f of z by z minus z naught is holomorphic on omega minus z naught, should think about why I say, say that it is holomorphic on omega minus z naught. Since this function is holomorphic on omega minus z naught and our hypothesis is that gamma is homotopic to gamma 1 as closed curves. I will assume that it is a reparameterization such that the domain of definition is the same and because the integral does not depend on the reparameterization, we can always uh, go to any reparameterization and work with it. Since gamma is homotopic, where in uh, gamma is homotopic to gamma 1 as closed curves in omega minus z naught and our function is also holomorphic there by Cauchy's theorem. we have the integral of f of z by z minus z naught over gamma to be equal to the integral of f of z by z minus z naught over gamma 1. This is by the second statement in the uh, statement of Cauchy's theorem which we proved last, uh, last week. That is good because uh, we have effectively reduced this uh, integral to an integral on the circle of uh, radius r around z naught. Let us draw a picture to uh, understand what we have done. Suppose this is our omega and suppose we pick a point z0 and uh, r be such that the disk of uh, radius r, the closed disk of radius r around z naught is contained in our domain omega. We will focus our attention on a much smaller disk. So, let us say this is a disk of radius epsilon uh, around z naught and let us now focus on the curve of radius epsilon around z naught and notice that with a straight line homotopy which will be like this. by going along these lines which originate from z0, you will be able to get hold of a straight line homotopy from the disk, the circle of radius r around z0 to the circle of radius epsilon around z0. So, let me write that down in dz0 r bar minus z0, the circle gamma 2 of radius epsilon around z naught is homotopic as closed curves to the circle gamma 1 and hence again by Cauchy's theorem. The integral of f of z by z minus z naught over gamma 1 is equal to which is the same as the integral of f of z by z minus z naught over gamma. This is the same as the integral over gamma 2 of f of z by z minus z naught. Notice that on the uh, in a neighborhood of the closure of the disk of radius r uh, around z naught minus the point z naught f of z by z minus z naught is again a holomorphic function. This is in, fa in fact a holomorphic function on omega minus z naught. Notice that the uh, 
uh, homotopy that we have described in d bar z0 r minus z0 that is also a homotopy in omega minus z0. So, one could conclude by applying Cauchy's theorem on omega minus z0 that uh, the integral over gamma 1 is the same as the integral over gamma 2. So, we have this by either of the domains that we would uh, have at our disposal. Anyway, we can conclude that the integral, so this is basically the integral of f of z by z minus z naught over gamma. Since f is complex differentiable at the point z naught, we can bound the Newtonian quotients at z naught by an m. Since it is complex differentiable at z naught for epsilon, there exists an epsilon prime such that for epsilon less than epsilon prime, the absolute value of f of z minus f of z naught by z minus z naught, this is bounded by some m and m positive such that this is this bound exists for z on the circle of radius epsilon around uh, z naught. And uh, this bound can be used to estimate our integral above. So, let us look at uh, the integral of f of z minus f of z naught by z minus z naught over gamma. This is gamma 2 which is the circle of radius epsilon around z naught. Let us consider its absolute value. This will be less than or equal to the absolute value of the uh, integrand which is f of z minus f of z naught by z minus z naught which is bounded by m and the arc length of gamma 2 which is going to be 2 pi epsilon. So, this is uh, a bound which we have because of uh, the holomorphicity or complex differentiability of f at the point z naught. Now, let us focus on what is there here, what is there inside the integral. This is just going to be the integral f of z by z minus z naught dz over gamma 2 minus the integral f of z naught by z minus z naught dz over gamma 2. This is the absolute value that we are interested in. Let us now look at each of the, the integrals inside the absolute value separately. Integral over gamma 2, let us look at the second quantity first, f of z naught by z minus z naught dz. What is that f of z naught is a constant. So, this is going to be f of z naught times the integral over gamma 2 dz by z minus z naught. Now, this is an integral which will be very similar to the integral of 1 by z over the unit circle. You should sit down and write down the change of variable to see that this is 2 pi i times f of z naught. This is precisely what the second integral here is going to be. And the first one by Cauchy's theorem we know is already equal to the integral of uh, f of z by z minus z naught over gamma. By substituting both we have this is equal to the integral uh, the absolute value of f of z by z minus z naught uh, over gamma minus 2 pi i f of z naught this is less than or equal to 2 pi epsilon m. Now, let us divide by the absolute value of 2 pi i which is going to be 2 pi to get 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma f of z by z minus z naught minus the f of z naught f prime the number f prime at z naught this is less than or equal to epsilon times m. Now, for uh, all epsilon less than epsilon prime this is satisfied. Now, by looking at epsilon going to 0, 
we conclude that this absolute value is equal to 0 by considering epsilon going to 0 we have integral f of z by z minus z naught is equal to f of z naught that's precisely what we had set out to prove over gamma so notice that gamma was a curve which was considered uh, homotopic to the circle of radius r around z naught one thing we should uh, keep in mind that we have used the fact that f is holomorphic on various domains at various points of time even though we started off with f being holomorphic on omega at places where it mattered we have considered f of z by z minus z naught which is holomorphic on omega minus z naught the cauchy's theorem here was applied to f of z by z minus z naught rather than to the function f of z itself yet again cauchy's theorem here was applied to the function f of z by z minus z naught rather than to the function f of z itself and the cauchy's theorem was applied on omega minus z naught not on omega so we had to pick the curve gamma which is homotopic as closed curves up to a reparameterization to gamma 1 in omega minus z naught rather than in omega. So, as noted in the beginning of uh, the proof, Cauchy's integral formula many times forms that powerful tool with which we can conclude things about holomorphic functions using the Cauchy's theorem. One such consequence is uh, that holomorphic functions are complex analytic. Let me define what complex analytic is. It is like in the case of uh, the real setting, we say that a function f from omega to c is complex analytic if it has a local power series expansion. If given z0 in omega, there exists a disk d z 0 r contained in omega such that f of z is equal to summation a n or such that the power series summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n this power series converges in the disk d z 0 r to the function f and as one of the first consequences of the Cauchy integral formula let us prove the very powerful theorem which states that a holomorphic function is complex analytic. Let f from omega to c be a holomorphic function on omega and let z0 be a point in omega. Suppose d z0 r bar is contained in omega, the closure of the discovery radius r is contained in omega, then for every n in natural numbers, let a subscript n be equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral f of z by z minus z0 to the power n plus 1 dz over the uh, curve gamma where gamma is the circle of radius r around z0 where gamma of t is equal to z0 plus r e to the power i t for t in 0 to 2 pi. Suppose we have gamma to be the circle of radius r around z0 then define a n to be in this manner then the series the power series summation a n z minus z0 to the power n this converges in dz0 r and it converges to none other than f of z itself.
So this theorem tells us that you start off with any holomorphic function locally we have a power series expansion. Not only do we have a power series expansion, we know explicitly what the coefficients of the power series expansion will be. Let us give a proof of the statement. Being holomorphic, it is continuous on the circle of radius r around z0 and uh, hence we can bound the function f on this circle. Since f is continuous on gamma, we call that gamma is just this curve z0 plus r times e to the power i t. There exists m positive such that the absolute value of f of z is less than or equal to m on gamma. And if you look at the absolute value of a n, this is the absolute value of integral over gamma f of z by z minus z0 to the power n dz which is less than or equal to the term inside if you notice absolute value of mod f of z by z minus z0 absolute value of z minus z0 is equal to r because z is on the circle of radius r so this is certainly less than or equal to m by r to the power n oh there is an n plus 1 here n plus 1 if i have not put it here it is n plus 1 in the theorem as well so, it is less than or equal to m by r to the power n plus 1 times the arc length which is 2 pi r and this tells us that uh, the absolute value of a n is less than or equal to 2 pi m into 1 by r to the power n. So, this tells us that the limit of uh, mod a n to the power minus 1 by n is at least r. Hence, by the definition of the radius of convergence, summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n, this converges in at least the disk of radius r around z naught. So, we have our candidate. Uh, a n summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n as an honest power series which converges in d z 0 bar. Let us now see that it indeed converges to our function f of z. To do that, let us focus our attention on d z 0 bar. Let w be some point in d z 0 bar. Let us draw a picture. Suppose this is our point z 0 and this is our circle of radius r. Let us pick some w here, this is z0 and let us look at a disk of radius epsilon around z0. Let gamma 2 be uh, the curve, the circle, the curve gamma 2 of t equal to w plus epsilon e to the power i t for t in 0 to 2 pi, where epsilon is such that the disk of radius uh, epsilon closure around z0 is contained in dz0. Then uh, let us now focus on the uh, the domain d bar z0 minus w. In this domain by looking at the straight line homotopy again by looking at the rays which originate from the uh, center and uh, going along straight lines, we will be able to get hold of a homotopy from the disk of radius epsilon around w to the disk of radius r around uh, z0. So, let me write that down in d of z0 r bar minus w we have, so notice that this is our gamma 2 and this is our gamma. 
gamma to uh, homotopic i have not written down the homotopy specifically in both the cases they are quite straightforward it's just the straight line homotopy it's a good exercise for you to sit down and write down what the homotopy is it's a uh, it's an exercise which will make you familiar with the notion as well write down what the homotopy explicitly is and notice that it is indeed a homotopy on d bar z0 r minus w gamma 2 is homotopic to gamma and hence by the cauchy integral formula f of w is equal to the integral of f of z by z minus w dz over gamma where gamma is now the circle of radius r around z0. Note that we have used the Cauchy integral formula to conclude that the integral of f of z by z minus w over gamma 2 is the same as the integral of f of z by z minus w over gamma and that this is equal to f of w by the a previous theorem that we proved. So, that is what is written here f of w is hence equal to the integral over gamma of f of z by z minus uh, w. Let us now look at uh, f of uh, z by z minus w here or rather let us look at 1 by z minus w. Consider 1 by z minus w. This is equal to 1 by by introducing a w naught term this is going to be 1 by z minus z naught into 1 minus w minus z naught by z minus z naught. Notice that we are looking at z coming from the disk of uh, the circle of radius r around z naught. So, absolute value of z minus z naught is always equal to r and we know that the absolute value of w minus z naught is less than 1. Uh, is less than r. So, this entire quantity this ratio is less than 1 and we can write uh, the geometric power series expansion here to conclude 1 by z minus w is equal to 1 by z minus z naught times summation w minus z naught by z minus z naught to the power uh, n where n is equal to 0 to infinity. This is precisely the geometric series expansion that we have and by plugging it in here, substituting in star, we have f of w, this is equal to 1 by 2 pi i times the integral f of uh, z into summation maybe the z and z naught can be plugged pulled in this is going to be w minus z naught to the power n by z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 dz over gamma. Let us now try to see whether we can interchange the integral and the summation. We have to justify that if, if we can do that and in order to do that let us consider f of z into w minus z naught to the power n by z minus z naught to the power uh, n plus 1. If you look at the absolute value of this, this is uh, less than or equal to remember that f of z, z is coming from the uh, circle of radius r around z naught and we have already put a bound for f on that circle. This is going to be less than or equal to m by z minus z 0 absolute value is always going to be equal to r, r to the power n plus 1 the denominator times the absolute value of w minus z naught to the power n. And w being from the uh, disk of radius r, this number is going to be less than r. So, hence we have this is less than or equal to m by r into rho to the power n where 0 less than rho less than 1 and because this geometric series converges by Weistra's m test and 
by apply, applying the fact that the integral of the uniform limit is the limit of the integrals we have summation f of z the integral of f of z by z minus z0 to the power n plus 1 into z uh, minus into w minus z0 to the power n dz over gamma this is equal to the sum of the integral of f of z by z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 and notice that the term w minus z naught to the power n does not have any number uh, any any z featuring in it and therefore this will just be a number of this type into w minus w naught sorry z naught to the power n and uh, by calling these numbers as a n we have this is f of w remember that f of w is exactly equal to summation a n uh, w minus z 0 to the power n and that is precisely what we were trying to prove for w arbitrarily picked from d z 0 uh, r we have just shown that the series summation a n w minus z naught to the power n converges to f of w and hence we have uh, proved our result. If you recall when we were discussing many results in the previous weeks especially when we were discuss discussing harmonicity uh, of uh, real valued functions we were constantly imposing the condition of continuously differentiable on holomorphic functions. Now we have justified that that is a redundant condition. In fact, we have proved a lot more. In its disk of uh, uh, convergence, we know that a power series is holomorphic. Not only is it holomorphic, its derivative is also holomorphic. And we know the explicit expression for the power series expansion of the derivative. And using the fact now that uh, the uh, holomorphic functions on omega are locally power series expansion, we can say that complex differentiability is a local property. We can say that locally we will be able to talk about its power series expansion which is uh, uh, infinitely differentiable whose derivative is also holomorphic. So let me write down the corollary which I just mentioned. Let me allow you to think on the uh, statement more deeply. Let f from omega to c be holomorphic. then f prime is also holomorphic and because it is complex analytic let me give you one more corollary which says that a holomorphic function is infinitely differentiable. Let f from omega to c be holomorphic then as a function from a subset of R2 to R2, f is infinitely differential. All partial, all partial derivatives of every order exist and uh, hence it is infinitely differential. And at this point, at this juncture, let me point out that this is one of the major differences that we will be seeing for holomorphic functions from that of the corresponding differentiable functions in real uh, in the real setting. Uh, if you recall we do not uh, have any result of this sort in real analysis. The, there are functions which are differentiable which are not real analytic. In fact there are functions which are smooth which are not real analytic. That is not going to be the case in the case of holomorphic functions. The, uh, the levels of rigidity that are associated to holomorphic functions ensures that the moment f is complex differentiable and holomorphic in a domain omega, its derivative, uh, it is its complex analytic that means that locally it has a power series expansion, its Taylor series converges and that its derivative is also holomorphic. So, this is one difference which 
makes or which which gives us very many beautiful results about uh, holomorphic functions as compared to uh, real differentiable functions which we will be exploring more in the next few lectures